So the One UI 4 launcher has just landed on some of Samsung's biggest smartphones, including the S21 flagship family. And this doesn't just tweak existing features to make them even more lovely, it also adds an absolute shower of fresh features and tools. Like seriously, so much stuff that just the notes I made for this video, if printed off, could probably choke a blue whale. If for some reason I printed them off on waterproof paper and then after going to all that trouble just toss them straight into the ocean. But I digress. There's a shag load of new Samsung One UI 4 stuff to cover, so I'm just going to shut my pie hole and get on with this tips slash best features guide slash whatever this is actually supposed to be. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now with One UI 4, you'll find that there's not a massive amount of difference when it comes to the general customization and personalization of your desktops and whatnot, but One UI 4 does take advantage of Android 12's new color palette feature, which as you can see there, can change up your color schemes, your fonts, your icons, all that good stuff based on the actual colors of your wallpaper. Now your Samsung smartphone will actually choose these colors for you. There's no way of manually adjusting it to pick the colors yourself, but you can actually see the effect that it will have in these handy little example screens up top. That's pretty much it for the wallpaper and style section though here in One UI 4 and the theme section hasn't really changed up at all either. Once again, you can just download from a huge selection on there, most of which will cost you extra scratch. Something else that has changed up for One UI 4 though is the widgets menu. So tap your way into that, you'll find it's much more neatly laid out. So you can quickly and easily scroll through a full list of all of your apps, find one that you wanna add a widget for. A couple of taps later, you're basically done. And for One UI 4, Samsung has also improved the lock screen your Sammy smartphone as well. So for instance, say you're streaming a good bit of music to a speaker or some headphones, you want to change the actual media output though, you can actually do that directly from the home screen now without even bothering to unlock your smartphone. Very quick and convenient. And there's plenty more clever stuff as well. If you double tap that clock widget up at the top, a lot of other widgets will pop up as well. It's fully customizable, of course. So for instance, you can see exactly what your schedule holds for you today. Looks like mine is, uh, is yet another thriller. Good old life, the gift that keeps on giving. And you can even uh, record little voice memos direct from the lock screen now as well, if that's your bag. Note to self, remember that every second of existence is super precious, even the ones where you're basically scooping cat turds. And you find that in One UI 4, the always on display has been slightly tinkered with as well. So for instance, you've now got the option to only show the always on display for new notifications, quite handy if you wanna preserve your battery life, definitely good idea with the standard S21. And you've also got some highly exciting new stickers and things to play around with too. Now another area that has been spruced up for One UI 4.0 is the good old device care section of the settings. As you can see there, the main page of device care has been rejiggered, so it's got more useful information available at a glance. Although slightly randomly, Samsung has decided to express the overall health of your device via the medium of emoji. Kind of makes you feel like you're back at school again. Gold star sticker, Johnny, you have not f***ed your phone yet. Presumably a frowny face would mean stop downloading all those Ariana Grande nudes that are packed to the tits with spyware. It's no good for the phone security or for your eyesight. But if you do have any issues whatsoever, the problems will be diagnosed here. You do actually have a separate diagnostic section as well where you can test absolutely every aspect of your Samsung smartphone. And if you want a better idea of what's going on behind the scenes, just tap this little icon up here and you can see a full history with all of your apps. And I love how there's absolutely bugger tons of battery features and tools packed in here now as well. You can see exactly what's been draining your juice. Tap on to uh, more battery settings as well. You'll find a couple of new features in here, including the protect battery option. As you can see there, that can help to extend the lifespan of your battery by limiting the maximum charge to 85%, so it's not overcharging. Although with something like the Galaxy S21, really wouldn't recommend turning that on, unless you want your phone to be dead well before tea time. And if you're a fan of Samsung's built-in One UI keyboard, well, that's changed up a little bit as well. So for instance, jump into the emoji section. You can now combine two emojis into one to express your complex human emotions even more accurately. Here's one absolute stunner that I made myself earlier. Once you've chosen your pair of emojis, you can even add a bit of text action. You can do some freeform drawing, really personalize it. Obviously, you'll probably want to create something that isn't quite as cack as this. And of course, there's lots more cutie stickers to share with the world. So hip hip as are, life is slightly more bearable. Android 12 also serves up several enhancements when it comes to privacy, making it much easier to see what your naughty little apps are up to at all times and denying them permissions when you want to be unseen and unheard. Not that I'm suggesting you're up to anything dodgy, of course, just a little bit of personal time, a little bit of you space, nothing wrong with that. 
So for instance, now when any of your apps start using the camera or the microphone, well, you'll get a little alert up in your notifications bar, a little green icon will flash up either with the camera or the microphone inside. And you'll also get a perpetual green dot up in that notifications bar just to clue you in. And if you don't have any idea which app is actually accessing your camera or your mic, well, you can just drag down that notifications bar and give that icon a little tap and it will flash up with exactly what app is using that device. And if you have a none of that, well, you can simply revoke its access. Alternatively, if you go to settings, dive into that privacy menu, you can actually completely kill the camera and the microphone access for all apps just with a quick tap at these little switches here. And you'll find you've got those exact same options in your notifications bar as well. If you drag that down to the bit with all the shortcut icons, you will need to actually add these because they aren't in there by default, but just tap that little plus icon and you'll find them in there, camera access and microphone access. Just drag them into place. And then anytime you fancy a bit of piece, just drag it on down, go to those icons and you can just give them a quick tap. And as you can see, once again, revoke that camera access for all apps and same for the microphone. And if you are at all paranoid about apps doing dodgy stuff behind your back, well, this privacy dashboard is absolutely brilliant. Just tap all permissions there. You can see exactly what's been accessed in every aspect of your smartphone, either the most recent access, otherwise you can also tap on individual apps and see exactly what they've been up to. All right, so let's move on to Samsung's camera app. And to be honest, this hasn't really changed up much at all for One UI 4.0. The scene optimizer doesn't pop up every two and a half seconds to scream at you to change the settings, which is definitely nice. It only really appears now to say, hey, things are a little bit dark now, buddy. Maybe you should think about considering turning on that night mode. Huh? Maybe, you big dummy. In that photo mode, you can also now press and hold on the shutter button to start immediately recording a video. And if you want to, you can also drag your finger up to that lock button in order to keep on recording, as you can see there. Quite handy if you've got kids or pets and they suddenly start doing something adorable for a bloody change. And speaking of pets, the portrait mode actually now works for cats and dogs as well. So you can shoot a portrait snap of them, then dive into the gallery and change the background effect. So you can simply change the intensity of the bokeh style blur effect, otherwise you've got all kinds of different studio options to have their fuzzy little mugs stand out. Quite like the colour point one, that usually creates some quite dramatic effects and you can uh, change the background brightness. I'm still a big fan of Samsung's single take camera feature as well, which is again great if you've got uh, kids or pets who so just want to take lots of photos and video of some sort of lively subject. The only problem with this is it tops off at 15 seconds, which sometimes isn't enough, but now with One UI 4.0, you do actually get this plus five seconds option which flashes up. If you need a little bit of extra time, you can just give that a tap and as you see, it'll just add five seconds to the timer. Not really entirely sure why they've done it that way and not just simply maxed it out at 20 seconds instead, but hey ho. Who am I to question the mighty Samsungs? I'm sure they know what they're doing. And last up for One UI 4, uh, Samsung has also slightly tweaked the pro mode as well, although mostly just a couple of little aesthetical changes. So for instance, if you add a grid tab, you get everything lined up. You've also now got a level on there as well, just to make sure your shot's not wonky. But the One UI 4 fun does not end with just shooting your photos as well. Oh no, 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 because Samsung has also spruced up the gallery app. So now, for instance, you're checking out your pics, you want to flick up, get a little bit more information about them. You've now got the very helpful map section, which can just organize all of your photos into the geographical location where you were. And this is basically a very quick and easy way of tracking down any photos that you took on a specific trip. Just head to the location on the map and give uh, the little icon a little tap and you'll be able to see all the photos that were shot right there. And also back in the gallery app, if you swipe up and then tap the little metadata section, you can actually quickly and easily edit or delete some of this information. Just tap perhaps unsurprisingly on edit, and then as you can see there, you can remove the location, you can change the date and the time as well. That's quite handy if you've downloaded any photos to your phone, because quite often you'll just get the date that you downloaded them rather than the date you actually took them, making them trickier to track down later on. And you've also got some new tools when you're editing your pics as well by tapping the little pencil icon. So for instance, uh, give this little sun icon down here a tap and you'll see you've got the new light balance feature. And this is a way of just brightening up any sort of murky snaps without blowing out those lighter elements. And yeah, the results can be a bit of a mixed bag, but as long as you only use it uh, sparingly, it generally helps out more than it screws things up. And if you were to tap this little smiley face icon down here and go to stickers, well, yes, you've got even more hot sticker action 
than ever before. I mean, frankly, I think this is what human evolution has been leading up to all these millennia. And if you go into the crop tours, you've actually got the ability to completely remove somebody from the background, just like you can on the likes of Photoshop. And it is quite awkward here on the smartphone because obviously the area that you're trying to select is kind of obscured by your massive fucking finger. But then you can uh, then add or remove sections that you want included in the overall final results. And this generally works better than I expected it to. Generally takes a lot of fine tuning. And then eventually after a lot of faffing about, you will get there and voila. You can then save this, then stick it on a different background later or whatever you fancy. Now, the Bigsby Assistant here on Samsung's Galaxy smartphones may still be a bit shonky, but one feature that I do really, really like is the Bigsby Routines tool, which can be found scrolled away inside of Advanced Features in the Settings. And this allows you to automate some of the stuff you find yourself doing over and over, like activating secure Wi-Fi when you leave home, turning on Do Not Disturb when you just want a bit of peace and quiet at lunchtime or during your workout hour, or whatever. This is now a lot more user friendly and a lot more powerful as well, offering a great range of if conditions. You can set up everything from your own gaming mode to your own low power mode. So for instance, here on my personalized gaming mode, which I set up before, uh, I've got the do not disturb coming on, so I'm not getting notifications flashing up. The brightness is locked, so it's not changing during the game. Got adaptive motion smoothness. My earbuds will not uh, react to any touches, which I might do by accident. And then all of those actions are reversed once I come out the game. So yeah, Bigsby routines definitely evolving into a very useful tool indeed. As you can see, just an incredible number of if events that you could add in now, certainly compared with when it first arrived. Even down to receiving specific messages with specific keywords from specific contacts. And with One UI 4.0, several other changes scattered around your Samsung smartphone as well. So for instance, Samsung Health has had a fresh lick of paint. For one, if you actually bother to enter all of your individual snacks and everything into this thing, well, the database is super impressive. I mean, look at the pork scratching selections, quite a few different options there. I'm a bit of a Mr. Porky man myself. Well, sweet baby Jesus, I'm gonna have to cut down on these things. And if you find yourself browsing uh, stuff on your smartphone late at night as well, where you've now got the extra dim screen mode, doesn't exactly make a huge impact, but it is still useful when you're doom scrolling at 3 a.m. Still bad for the old noggin, but at least it keeps your eyes from being strained. And allegedly, you should be able to now resize floating windows with a pinch of your fingers, but I couldn't get that to work at all. I found the only way of resizing them was just by dragging the edges like so. So anywho, those are some of my favorite bits packed into One UI 4.0 and Android 12 here on Samsung's Galaxy smartphones. But if you've been enjoying a bit of One UI 4.0 on your Samsung blower and I missed out your own particular favorite new upgrade update or new feature or whatever, definitely clue me in in the comments down below. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.